forgive me Emperor if I have sinned it's been over a month since my last video um, and about 40,000 years since my last confession um, right welcome to the channel um, this is another of my um, build and magnetize videos um, I will start out by saying there isn't going to be much magnetizing on this one because it's not necessary um, this is the brand new storm speeder kit um, as I'm filming this it came out yesterday so I spent last night building uh, the first one uh, that I picked up um, and uh, today I'm going to be filming the build of the second one for you um, if you didn't see the gladiator video um, just I'll run through things very very briefly for you um, so what I've done everything is off the sprue and um, ready to go um, there's the base of the kit there I'll go through why that's done like that in a moment um, the only thing we're going to be using in this one is plastic glue I like to call it Isha's Tears because Space Marines make Eldar cry um, so what I'm going to do basically is just follow uh, just build using the main instructions um, as and when I find a spot where I would deviate from those or do something differently I will um, make a point of explaining to you what I would do differently and why there are a few bits in this kit um, where I wouldn't follow um, or I didn't follow um, the uh, the main build instructions and there are some uh, very I think valid reasons for doing so um, in true blue Peter style for those of you who understand the reference here's the one I built yesterday um, it's not absolutely complete at this point um, because there are various sub assemblies um, that I think will make it much much easier um, to uh, to build and paint this kit as we go forward um, and these videos are very much uh, done with that in mind um, in terms of getting all of the parts of the kit painted uh, to the best of our ability um, so we'll start with the base um, of the main the main body of the speeder um, the speeders come on these new flying stands um, there is just sort of a, um, a socket joint there um, the reason I've glued it in is because as you go about building this uh, kit you're adding more and more plastic to it um, I cut this off and glued it onto the frame last night so it's had a good sort of 20 hours or so um, probably slightly less um, just to sort of dry and harden um, what that means is that that is as solid a join as I can get um, which means that when I come to um, or I won't have to get to the point where I've got a fully built speeder that I'm then trying to glue onto a flying stand and hope that the glue dries before um, before the, uh, the kit starts to tilt or I won't have to sort of try and balance it up holding it up with something else or anything like that that essentially is the lightest piece uh, the, or the lightest thing that is ever going to go on here so I figured that was best to get the glue dried and properly set at that point um, so first page um, of the instructions is to get the uh, um, sort of the seats the engines and these um, front uh, front pieces um, attached so without further ado we'll actually get started um, as with the um, the gladiator video um, I'll try and at all possible keep things in focus um, this is just standard citadel um, plastic glue um, you may want to use your own alternative um, this just happens to be what I've got to hand um, other plastic glues are available ha 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 so they say um, however I've never had any problems with using Games Workshop's own um, as with the gladiator the gladiator build it does benefit to try and get um, the minimum possible amount of glue um, on the kit where you're 
um, attaching it so that you don't get any spillage because that's when you get sort of fingerprint marks in the plastic and so on. So there we go, that's the first bit. Then we get the um, uh, sort of the, the Space Marines legs, the bottom of the seat um, part that comes um, braces the centre of the, the speeder like that. Um, probably a piece that, in all honesty, you may not need to glue in. Um, however, um, I don't like to uh, to sort of not glue bits that aren't intended to move. There'll be plenty of pieces further on where actually I am recommending that you don't glue stuff that um, is sort of noted up as being glued in the instructions. Um, but I'll explain why when we come to them. So I've just added some glue to the base of uh, that piece. And we'll just pop it in there and press it flat. Um, don't need to wait too long for that to dry. It's not going to move. It's not going to... Um, sort of shuffle around. Um, now, um, uh, my favourite uh, pointy stick. So the next piece we're going to glue in this slot here. As you can see, the slot comes all the way down around there and then just sits into this recess um, here. Um, and the piece that we're going to stick in there is this one. It's got the two engines on the back. And this is the first piece where I, uh, I deviate from the instructions later on. So we'll just try fit it to make sure it fits in there nicely. Yep. And then we'll drop some glue in there. Again, you don't want to go too heavy on this. I mean, these slots do or can take a lot of glue. Um, but actually, the bond will be strong enough and the slot holds it firm as well. Um, and the last thing you want is glue squirting out all over um, the rest of your model. Um, that's why a lot of people do use brush plastic glue. Um, it can um, can help you get a, a finer amount of detail or a finer amount of glue on the model, um, just to avoid that. And then the next piece to go on is this section here at the front of the speeder. Um, it has the air intakes um, in it um, for the engines that sort of seem to run all the way down the side of, uh, um, well, sort of into the front of the model. I'm not quite sure what they're for or supposed to be for. Um, but, uh, if we knew what it was all about and how it was built, then uh, we'd be making them these days, wouldn't we? Mm -hmm. We'd all be flying around in land speeders with ice cannons strapped to the front for those people that get in our way at work. Right, okay. Um, bit of glue. Oh, like that. And then just drop that in. And what I'll say is um, something I think I probably said with the uh, the Gladiator kit as well. This kit is very precise, uh, precisely manufactured. Um, it goes together really well, I find, um, or I found. Um, the, uh, the pieces all fit very snugly into the places where they're supposed to be. Um, and that's why... Uh, when we come to it later on, we won't need much in the way of magnets um, because actually the pieces that you want to swap out do all just push and hold nicely in the places um, where they will, uh, well, they're intended to go. So what I'll do, I'll just also have a brief um, talk about the various variants. Um, of the storm speeder as I'm building um, I don't claim that this is sort of any form of tactica or that I have any particular insight for um, competitive play um, it's just really my thoughts on um, 
the model and the rules um, and which ones I plan on using and why. Um, so the first variant that we want to look at is the Hail Strike. Um, one thing that is of note, they are all different data sheets, so you could in theory take three of each in um, your Space Marine Army um, and, um, and have nine speeders on the table. Um, that's sort of very white scars. Um, I'm not entirely sure that that is probably the the uh, the most competitive way to go, but by the same rule, um, I do prefer to play by the rule of cool. And if you want nine speeders on the table, um, well, with this you can take nine Primaris speeders, uh, and you've still got all the firstborn options if you really, 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 really want to go um, and build an army of. Um, land speeders. Um, so I pop the seats in there and then the side plates um, go on and as you can see um, as I said the kit is built very nicely the whole thing um, does just seem to slot into place very much where it's supposed to go um, and actually any gaps that you, you see that's that's just push fitted into place um, and whilst there are some little gaps there um, yeah the glue will be more than enough to hold that um, one little feature I have started to notice um, on this kit in particular I can't remember whether I saw it on the gladiator or not is these little sections here these sort of little cut out tabs um, there's quite a few of those in this kit um, and you can see them here on the one here on the side panel as well uh, just at the back there um, and another one at the front here um, now those line up with some tabs on the receiving piece just to hold it all into place where it's actually supposed to go um, now, in my view, that's a really, really good thing for um, the kit. Um, it really helps to make it go together a lot easier. Um, and you know that when you're building it, um, you're getting things in the right place because it just sort of it has that feel that that's where it's supposed to be um, there's no sort of offering it up and don't you know, is that bit in the right place or should I be pushing it a bit further over or that, any of that um, as you can see the even just the initial press with the glue is holding that all together quite nicely already um, so yeah the um, the hail strike um, variant is the anti-infantry um, option um, you have a twin iron storm uh, heavy stubber on the turret uh, you've got I think they're frag storm launchers on the sides on the side sponsons um, and you then have um, I'm going to have to look this up in a minute but I think it's um, an onslaught Gatling cannon. I don't think it's the heavy variant um, in the uh, the main sort of hull mounted um, turret sec uh, not turret uh, in the main sort of hull mounted weapon. Um, there we go. I'm filming this on my phone. My codex is upstairs. So, um, Apologies if it is the heavy, uh, the heavy onslaught Gatling cannon. Um, you just have to forgive me for that one. So that's the basic uh, shape of the speeder together, and as I say, the kit goes together really nicely, really quickly. Um, it's not as big a kit as the Gladiator. That's um, that's certainly. Uh, very true um, but um, 
but I found that this, this sort of kit were built very quickly and very easily. Um, so I'm just going to pause there because the next section um, we're going to deviate from the instructions a little bit so I just want to explain that. Well what do you know I was right, it is just the normal onslaught Gatling cannon on the front there. So we'll go into that in just a second. But uh, for now what you can see is the next stage on the instructions is to put in these engine cowlings. Um, now as you'll see from the one I built yesterday I haven't um, the reason being is that those engine cowlings do come out almost the full length of the engine exhaust nozzle here um, and whilst you then could spray and paint I find that spraying and painting that engine um, exhaust and doing the cowling separately and then gluing it in um, lets you get the brush into all the places that you actually want to um, want to get it to far easier far far easier um, than if that cowling was in place um, that's something that is common to all of the new Primaris vehicle variants that I've done so far um, the repulsors both have it the impulsors got it the gladiators got it and this has got it um, uh, so yeah definitely um, well worth in my view leaving those off um, for now what I am going to do however is glue them together and again same thing with the rest of the kit because this is so um, precisely manufactured what you can actually do is glue these together push them into the right location on the kit and leave it there to dry um, because what you'll see hopefully is that there's only one locator pin on this um, so those three points are all where um, contact is made between the two halves of the the cowling so it goes together like that um, now if you are going to push these onto the kit and leave them to dry what I would recommend is you glue this one and the middle one. Leave that one because that's the side that will be in contact with the speeder. Um, those two will be plenty to hold it together, especially once you actually get it into place once it's painted. Um, but if you glue that one at this stage and then push it into place on the speeder to dry, you run the risk of that glue just seeping slightly, making contact with the back, um, making a seal. Um, and then you've got a bit more of a problem uh, when you pull that off to paint it. Um, excuse my fiddly fingers. So we'll just push those together. And then you'll see what I mean here. Uh, you can see the slots on the back around the cowling, where the, uh, around the exhaust where this is supposed to go. So all I'm going to do is just drop it in there and I'm going to leave it to dry. Now the reason I've done that is to hold it in the right shape. Um, so when it dries, it's going to dry in, uh, in exactly right so that when I come to, um, to glue it on later once I've painted the, uh, the rest of the kit, um, I'm not going to have to sort of bend it or um, tweak it into place um, I know it's it's set in the right shape and at the right angle um, and I have to say I am very very impressed I mean I do applaud Games Workshop for the, the standard of the kits that they're producing these days um, I mean, my, my experience is mainly with Space Marines, but the, the stuff that they are coming out with at the moment um, for the Primaris Marines, um, regardless of what you think about the level of design or you know options, you know the, the sort of the overall shape of it, the the standard of manufacture um, uh, and the precision of these kits is unbelievable. Um, I've been in the hobby 25, 26 years. And when I think back to some of the vehicles that I built when I first started, um, I'm surprised I kept going. Um, 
So, uh, quickly back to the hail strike. I did just have a quick check of the um, the data sheet, and it is the standard onslaught Gatling cannon um, that it's equipped with. Um, so what you get is you get eight strength four uh, minus one AP shots uh, from the turret heavy stubbers, the iron hail heavy stubbers on the turret. You also get um, eight shots at strength five AP minus one out of the um, onslaught Gatling cannon in the hull. Um, so that's up to 16 shots. AP minus one is not going to make you a way through much in the way of heavy infantry, um, but that's really not this role. It's a harrying, um, sort of nuisance type of vehicle. Um, it's designed to go hunting, um, sort of lighter units, um, and so what you're essentially looking at is 16. Infantry, uh, sort of light infantry guardsmen, bulk boys, that sort of thing, uh, the ideal targets. Um, ideally, toughness three targets because your um, iron hail heavy stubbers are only strength four. Um, if you're starting to target toughness four stuff, then you, uh, your efficiencies will drop um, substantially um, from it. Um, so Pick your targets carefully. Um, it's it's very much a flat track bully. Um, using a cricketing reference, um, you know, this this is not a vehicle um, to sort of um, try and come up with some kind of stunning battlefield performance. You you pick a weak unit and you you shoot it until it's dead. Um, this isn't going to wipe you a unit of. Alaris Custodians or um, something like that. Um, at the moment I am just following the instructions um, for, for putting together the um, the kit as normal so I mean hopefully you're following along what I'm doing. Um, the page of the instructions is still correct at the back there um, so just filling in the details on the back. Um, the Sponson weapons on the Hail Strike are two um, Fragstorm grenade launchers um, so they're Assault D6 uh, they again they sort of they're, they're very much anti-infantry light infantry uh, killers they aren't going to do damage to anything particularly with a, a decent save um, uh, D6 in, uh, with the um, sort of the blast uh, rules it does lend itself towards firing at larger units as well um, so I mean you can see the hailstorm, the hail strike, sorry, is very much geared, geared towards picking on lighter um, armoured units, lighter, more lightly armoured units, should I say, um, uh, sort of flanking troops, scouts, that sort of thing. Um, this is not a vehicle to be pushing up the centre of the table and forming the. Um, the main part of your um, your advance. Um, so that's the hail strike. Um, we then move on to the um, thunder strike and the hammer strike. Um, these pilots, uh, sorry, the the crew here, the two um, the two crew in the main compartment are identical at this point. The helmet is different. And the arms are different, but I'll, I'll just go through that briefly because I think that's quite a, a clever little bit of design that they've done um, when we get there. Um, so the, uh, I must admit, when I looked at the data sheets, the thunder strike and the hammer strike really confused me because they do very much appear to be aimed at doing the same job. Um, in or well, very very similar jobs, um, there is very little to distinguish between the two. Um, the uh, 
the Thunderstrike um, is ostensibly um, an anti-flyer platform. Um, so it has um, sort of a uh, Yeah, sorry about that. Um, well, managed to get that, um, that control panel in. Um, so the Thunderstrike is, um, uh, as I said, the uh, the anti-flyer um, variant. Um, it's got the uh, missiles under the wings, um, which actually I just stuck on here. I think they look cool. I think it would look a bit weird um, to have the uh, the missile mounting points with no missiles on. Um, uh, for the other variants I just won't use uh, won't use them. Um, so you've got those two missiles there, strength 10, AP minus 3 and D6 damage. Um, so very much designed um, a sort of a vehicle killer type uh, weapon. Um, it also has a last talon in the hull. Um, which is a two-shot LAS cannon. Um, again, very much an anti-vehicle weapon. Um, and then um, it has a pair of Icarus rocket pods in the turret, um, which uh, get you an extra um, plus one to hit against flying units, um, uh, but are in other respects all exactly the same as um, as any of the uh, the rocket, Icarus rocket pods that you get on pretty much all of the Primaris vehicles. Um, so we'll just stop uh, talking about that for a second to talk about these um, crew. Um, as I said earlier, the, the two pieces so far are identical. Um, there is a mild difference between the helmets. Um, it's not one that is likely to cause a significant um, problem if you get them mixed up however one of them hopefully you can just see has this little sort of targeting um, I'm assuming it's some kind of target or maybe a um, uh, some kind of um, link to the uh, the speeders systems um, just on the side there the other one doesn't have that but is in other respects um, identical um, and it's identical to the helmet for the guy that sits in the turret at the back um, so where these um, crew differentiate and um, which I think is a, a very sort of clever um, piece of design is in the arms um, so the guy that sits on the left as you look at the vehicle from the front has arms where the hands are in the upright position the guy that sits on the other side both of his arms or both of his hands are in the horizontal um, position. Um, so the quick, uh, if you if you sort of mixed your your parts up, um, you're not quite sure which one you should be um, you should be putting with which. Two hands upright um, for one guy, and two hands horizontal for the other. Um, now the uh, the hands actually fit. Uh, or the, the base of the hands fit into um, the control panel as well and the control panel um, is designed to accept that hand specifically I'll show you that in a second when I've just got this on so there we go nice and simple and he just slots in there we're not going to glue him in at the moment I'll come to that in a second um, as you can see, sits quite nicely. Now, 
when you look into the control panel on the inside you can see here that's where the hands attach and the other guy has two little depressions in um, in the control panel there these are flat pieces slightly raised up these are indentations um, so I won't say you can't get it wrong um, but they have done everything they can to help you get this right um, at this point now the instructions suggest that you glue um, those two guys in at this stage once he's got his arms on obviously um, now I would recommend that you don't um, and the reason for that is when you come to paint it you will have a nightmare if you have glued them in at this point it does make um, to the build a bit strange um, with some odd sub assemblies um, however I really really <laughs> wouldn't advise having these pilots in if you're trying to paint in that crew compartment there um, so let's show you so there's the two crew in not only have you got detail on seats behind a vent here you've then got um, if you can just see down a control panel with some buttons down there um, sort of um, thruster uh, power um, sort of levers in there. You've got knees, bits of the crew. There's a you know you can still see down the bit of the seat there, down the side panel here. That's all going to be visible um, when you've painted this because it's not an enclosed crew compartment. It's not as though you can just put the canopy on and paint that bit black and get away with it. Um, if you take them out, I mean obviously painting the guy himself is very much easier if he's not in there um, you can paint the back but that is then all of a sudden all very much more accessible um, to be painted you can still sort of do a nice simple job on it um, you don't need to go into great detail But I wouldn't want to be trying to get a paintbrush down in between them um, if they're stuck in place. Now the important part is that if you've done that and you're leaving the crew out, you don't put the roll cage um, bars in. Because if you glue those in place, you will not be able to get the crew in um, at a later stage. Um, that's a couple of steps away yet um, so we go on to the canopy um, and I'll never understand quite why they do this but as with basically every Space Marine vehicle um, there's a little raised blister here for some sensor arrays um, and that sensor array is a separate piece I don't know why um, I'm assuming it's got something to do with the uh, the process of actually manufacturing um, a kit with that as a recessed detail um, probably wouldn't come out of the mould if uh, if that weren't the case um, personally I don't think I'd have too much of an objection to it being a flat detail um, but that's just me um, uh, so what we're going to do then is this is the um, fixture for the main hole gun again we've got a little slot cut out of it just here um, that matches up with um, a little piece on the receiving end um, to make sure that you're getting it in the right way not quite sure how I managed it on the first build but I did actually manage to rotate that but it was obvious that it was in the wrong way that hole isn't a circle it's taller than it is wide um, so it needs to be tall that way uh, with the straight edges to either side um, otherwise your guns will go in wrong so 
that then is going to plug onto the front of the speeder there, like that. Um, and what we're going to do is, um, so again, as you can see, there's nice lovely recesses in here to show you where the pieces are all going along there as well. Um, those are the bits um, that are easiest to glue. Um, you can stick glue elsewhere if you want, um, but um, I'll leave it up to you because you might get some seepage. There we go. Really starting to take shape now. Um, as I said, it's a much, much more straightforward build than the Gladiator. Um, a lot fewer pieces, um, in fairness, so yeah, that's what you'd expect. Um, but still a very nice piece of kit when it's on the table. Right, so let's get back to the um, Thunderstrike because. Um, what we're actually going to do is basically follow the instructions now, um, with the exception of these roll cage um, parts. Um, I'm going to sort of put all the winglets and um, uh, the, the back sort of um, parts of the, the speeder on. Um, so just follow the instructions at that point. Um, so yeah, the uh, the weaponry on the um, on the Thunderstrike, you've got a strength 10 gun, no, sorry, strength 10 missiles. They're just one missile, um, as far as I can see, um, per turn. Then you have two shots from your um, Laz Talon, um, which uh, is basically the same as every other Laz Talon you pretty much get, and every other single Laz Talon that you get. Um, on the uh, the Primaris stuff, um, and then you also have the Icarus rocket pods. They're two D three shots from the pair of rocket pods. Um, so potentially, you're sort of looking six shots, um, which could do up to twelve damage. Um, so it is potentially quite a beefy um, uh, a beefy thing. However, what puts me off slightly, and it is only slightly, there's very little to choose in my opinion between the Thunder Strike and the Hammer Strike, um, is the number of shots. Um, the the Thunder Strike actually gets um, a, a bonus to its ballistic skill. It's ballistic skill two plus, not three plus. Um, mainly because you're using the um, missiles under the wings and so the side sponsons, they had to figure out something to do with the or put on the side sponsons um, and so they've essentially sort of called it some kind of targeter that gives it a bonus to its um, its ballistic skill now that does mean that it remains effective longer um, than uh, the other variants because obviously as it starts to drop in ballistic skill it goes from 2 up to 3 up to 4 up instead of 3 up to 4 up to 5 up um, however you have only got the one missile the two shots with the last talon and then the rocket pods. Um, the real comparison comes with um, the hammer strike, um, which is um, a little more conventional, shall we say. Um, that doesn't have the targeting arrays on the um, on the side sponsons. You've got crack storm grenade launchers. On the side sponsons there, um, they're okay. Um, you know, I mean, it's a, it's a crack storm grenade launcher, exactly the same as you would get from um, a repulsor. Um, uh, it uh, it can do a little job, but it's not going to take something out in its entirety. However, um, what you do get um, is you get a Uber Melter Multi Melter Destroyer um, type weapon in the hull mount, which is a three shot um, it's 
sorry, a three shot multi melter essentially. Um, strength 8, AP minus 4, as you'd expect from um, Melter Weaponry. Um, and the new style damage of D6 or D6 plus 2 if you're in half range. Um, the benefit is that, um, or in my view, the, the big um, the big benefit is that the, um, the turret weapon is called a Hammer Strike Missile Launcher. Um, now what that does is it's on the face of it it's a pair of crack missiles they're strength 8 um, but they're AP minus 3 and they're a flat 3 damage um, only two shots um, so not the biggest sort of uh, rapid firing weapon in the world however the flat 3 damage is what really sells me on them from a gaming point of view because you know what it's going to do you're not going to be in a position where you sort of you're relying on it from doing um, sort of the as much damage as possible from a d6 um, damage and then you roll it and what you actually roll is a one or a two and then the death guard rules knock it down to a one um, it's it's that sort of reliability um, and there are enough dice rolls in the game that I like to have reliable damage um, output from my weapons as much as possible it's one reason I like the multi melter or the, the heavy melter um, destroyer on the, the front <coughs> excuse me on the front um, because the extra damage when you're in half range um, gives you a bit of reliability. All of a sudden you're doing a minimum of three damage um, from it, even if you roll a one, um, which I like far more than uh, having to rely on a random dice roll every time. So we've got all the little winglets and vents and things on um, now again the next step in the instructions is to put on the repulsor plates at the side um, there are six uh, different repulsor plates on uh, this one so we'll just show you those um, you've got one that comes in at an angle one that lies flat another one that lies flat another one that lies at an angle and then two at the rear at the rear. Look through the camera, not at the model. Um, now, again, same as with the Gladiator um, and the Repulsor, I fully intend on leaving these off to paint them. It's entirely your choice, but again, as you can see, there's a gap between the Repulsor plate and the hull that's quite visible and it's even more visible sort of around here um, I don't want to have to stick a paintbrush in there and try and get a paintbrush to all of those surfaces so I'm leaving them off I'm painting them separately it will mean that when I come to paint these I can just do a big dry brush or um, sort of spray them the base color and then just dry some highlights on um, stick it on rather than trying to get paintbrush into that horrible little gap there um, same with the um, plates on the sides here um, like that I don't want to try and fiddle painting in there um, so I'm just going to take them off they go together really nicely you can see again all those little slots on the edge of the plates there that marry up with the second piece that lies uh, flat on the inside. You've got the sort of the, the projecting um, part that connects there. Um, so I'll push that one on, push these in. Um, and you can see how nicely that slots together with no effort whatsoever. The only thing I would suggest is, I did think about doing this and then I'm quite proud of myself for stopping myself. 
potentially you could glue that um, and take that off and have that as one piece but I'm not sure whether or not it would come off as one piece or whether it would just snap because of the angle of the, the parts that you're attaching them to um, so I've left them separate you know I mean it's not going to make any real difference when it comes to how long it takes to paint them um, so next next bit uh, looking at the guy in the turret um, and it's getting quite cold in here now it's quite late and there's the um, arctic weather front incoming and there's no insulation in this garage um, so if I start dropping uh, bits of the kit you'll know why it's because my fingers are freezing up so here's the third head again you'll see no um, no link um, sort of or sensor sensor piece on him um, these are sort of free to um, put whatever angle on this guy you want in terms of which way he's looking um, this is the um, part that um, attaches to the turret weapons um, you do not glue this unless you do not want those turret weapons to tilt up or down um, what you do is you pop it there you put it to one side and then the other piece you glue you put a dot on the front one, one dot in there dot in there and then you just run a little bit around the back keep the glue away from anywhere where that um, that bar is going to go because if you get any plastic glue around that join whatsoever that isn't going to rotate um, if my fingers are going to work you can just see that's um, that's freely rotating um, in there so that will mean that when we uh, when we come to put the turret weapons on they will point wherever we want them to um, so glue in the top there and then the main sensor for this now, this doesn't appear to have an up or a down um, it just sticks in and then that's the main part of the turret done that can just sit on the back there like that like so again I'll probably take it off um, to paint just so that I can make sure that I'm uh, getting into that gap um, with both the primer and the actual paint itself oh one more thing just before we go um, this isn't in the instructions at this stage because of um, how they suggest you um, you build it however I'm just going to put the cover on the the, uh, the whole uh, weapon there And the reason I'm doing that now is because that having tried it and spent ages yesterday working out what I was going to, or how I was going to magnetise the guns into um, that hole, um, I realised that actually it's snug enough that if you push the main weapon into there, um, it holds perfectly fine and no, uh, doesn't fall out. Uh, so that was an hour of my life I won't get back, but um, never mind. Uh, the things I do for you lot, eh? Right. Um, so, this is where the instructions then split into the variant that you want to build. Um, now, I have um, I have it on good authority that you can magnetise these. Um, and these, um, I don't think you need to. As I say, having uh, spent quite some time um, last evening fiddling about with bits of sprues and magnets um, and sort of trying to get magnets glued into the right spots um, I actually uh, then said hang on a minute let's try it just by push fitting them and lo and behold 
they held. Um, now, as with some of the elements of the Gladiator um, build that I did, um, yeah, because that fit is so snug at this stage, um, what you actually find is that by priming them all separately, um, you actually decrease the, uh, the sort of the the play in the joint, so it makes the fit even more snug. Um, um, so actually, by leaving these pieces off and priming them separately, you make the fit tighter um, and you make it less likely that you actually need the magnets. Um, I will show you where I would put magnets if I was going to do so. Um, however, as I say, when I tried it, I didn't think that they were necessary. Um, and whilst I'm all for magnetising, um, I don't want to waste them. So I don't need to really do anything with the uh, the, the hailstorm, um, the iron hail uh, heavy stubbers, because actually um, they just plug in and there are no shared parts between them and the two missile stroke rocket variants that go on here. So again we've got a shaped hole with a flat bottom um, just to make sure that they're going in the right place and they're both facing in the same direction. Um, and that's why you don't glue that back peg in. Um, yes, I've drilled the bowl, the, the barrels out. Um, you should always drill your barrels out. If you're worried about getting them in the wrong place, use a paint pen or a little spot of something or a needle just to put a pin prick in the exact middle um, and then use a pilot hole. Um, now, get onto the sponsons. This is the side sponson, sort of similar in style to the Gladiator and the Impulse and so on, but a lot, a lot more straightforward in terms of construction because they don't sort of move outwards. You've got three pieces uh, to go in here. This is the Fragstorm launcher. You've got a sensor array for the Thunderstrike, and you've got um, a three. Uh, is it three? Yes, it's three. Uh, a three slot. Um, sort of option for the crack storm uh, launcher. Now, if I were going to magnetize this, I would get a thin magnet in the back there, one in there, there's plenty of space to drill it in. Um, however, that is perfectly snug in my view, it doesn't fall out, and actually, it's quite tricky to take out once that's on the model. Um, again, priming those pieces separately will make that fit even tighter um, to make it less likely that it's going to fall out. Depending on what variant you want to go with, um, obviously the Fragstorm and the Crackstorm uh, variants don't look that dissimilar. It's just the number of um, sort of specific grenades you've got sticking out there that make the difference. Um, so you, you know, I mean, every reasonable uh, gamer opposite you isn't going to bother. They're either not going to know that there's a difference, not going to be able to tell, um, or not going to care. Um, but frankly, if you end up playing someone who insists you use the right piece in the side sponson, for the grenade style or the grenade launcher style that you are using. Um, personally, he's probably someone I would avoid playing again in the future. So what I'm just doing now is actually gluing these side sponsons on. Um, I can get the paint in um, around them without too many problems on these. Um, 
getting in there with a brush just to do a bit of silver before I, uh, I sort of tidy up around the outside isn't going to be an issue. Um, so they're in there and then all we have to do when we decide which variant we want to use is plug the, uh, the relevant uh, front piece in. Um, and just lever it out when you want to change it. There we go. But as you can see, already quite nice and snug in there. Um, without me even pressing too hard to sort of um, try and get it to, um, to push in. Uh, not much left to go now, really. Um, but as Talon goes together quite straightforwardly, um, as with a lot of uh, Games Workshop's main hull weapons on the primary stuff, it comes in two halves. I do wish they wouldn't do that, but I'm sure there are reasons why. I don't like them doing it because when you've clipped them off the frame, there's always a bit of a line down between the two. Um, but as you'll see, there we go. Push that in. And that is more than, again, sort of more than snug in there at the moment. Not going to fall out by accident. And when we've got some primer on there and some primer in there, um, it'll fit really nicely. If I were going to magnetize it, then put drill a hole in there, magnet in that bit and during the construction phase just stick a magnet in the front there or even cut this peg off, sit a magnet in the body of the um, the barrel there um, and just fill that hole with a magnet in it um, and the two will just plug together quite nicely um, but as it is I don't think it's necessary um, And one of these did seem to have a bit of an issue um, when I put it together. Uh, hopefully it's not this. Well, hopefully it was a miss, uh, a miscast on the other, um, the other kit that I had. That goes together quite nicely. And then you've just got a front piece um, to put the barrels on. Like that. There is a right and wrong way to put that in. Um, let's just say if you put it in the wrong way around, then those three bits don't line up with the rest of the gun and it's quite obvious that it's wrong. Yes, here we go. So, this is the main bit to watch out for this kit. Um, and I don't know whether it's a, um, a design fault or whether it was a manufacturing fault when they made the mold or what, but you'll notice on there, there are three raised pegs and only one recess. So when you put your gun, your Gatling together, what you have, is two pegs both trying to fit into a hole that isn't there. Um, that is, I think it, I would have to say unique in my experience with a Games Workshop kit, um, that there's been an error in sort of the, the creative process of making the kit like that. Um, I mean, I say error, it's, you know, they obviously didn't intend for both of those to have pegs, one is intended to be a recess, one is intended to be a peg. Um, however, if you just cut that one off, or both of those off in fact, because you, you, you know, you're not creating a recess for the peg to sit in, so cut both of those off. They're the ones at the back of the gun, not near the barrel, um, or not near the, um, sort of the, the loud end. Um, cut them off, just 
be careful when you put that together and when you glue it together that it's all lined up. It won't affect your enjoyment of the kit or the game. Um, it's just something you need to be aware of. That only goes in one way as well. It's got a little peg to make sure that you're putting it in the right way around. There's the Gatling done. So all we're left with now, um, aside from very, very, very cold hands, is the two um, rocket pods. Now these use the same pieces, um, or e each one uses the same piece with the exception of the front panel. Um, so again, what you probably could do is glue one of those in and just use it um, as both options. If you don't want to do that, I, as I've said all along, I think it's snug enough um, that you can swap them out um, as you want. Um, and hopefully, as I put this together, we'll be able to show you that. Um, now, of course, these are a mirror image of each other, so it is important you get the right pieces. Um, marrying up to the right part of the kit. Um, what I've done, of course, is clipped everything off the frame. So I'm having to be extra careful at this point um, to make sure that I'm using the right parts. If you do these one at a time, you won't have that problem. Because you'll clip all the parts for one launcher off and then you'll clip all the parts for the other one off. And that would be the sensible way of doing it. Whereas I've gone for the silly way. All to make it easier for you. So, that's the main part, and then your, not that one, front part just slots into there. Now what you can do is fill this with green stuff, put a magnet in there, a magnet in the green stuff there, and that will hold really well really really well um, however I a, didn't want to waste my time with that much green stuff while I waited for it to set and as I said I tried it out and it holds um, what I did try doing um, before I worked that out is gluing a piece of sprue in here with a magnet stuck into it um, and then sticking a magnet on the back of the, um, so the, the, the pot on the front. Um, it just wasn't necessary. As you can see, there's a slot in the top there where this front piece sits. Um, and you've got this raised section here. Sits within that recessed section there. And when you push that in, that ain't coming out by accident. Um, yeah, you need to get behind and pull for that to want to come out. And as we've said all through the video, that will just tighten up even more with some primer in there. So let's just do the other one. Glue across the back. Glue in there, a bit of glue in that little panel. You see how many of these little panels there are as you um, as we've gone through building this kit. Um, that I think is something that, quite frankly, they just couldn't have done without the computer design that they're now using. Um, 
and it makes such a difference to how easy the pieces go together more specifically how easy they stay together while you're waiting for the glue to dry um, as you can see I mean I got a bit of glue on that just plugged it together and then dropped it um, and it didn't come apart because that um, that section was just holding it falling out uh, so let's do this one then as the um, thunder strike so these are the Icarus rocket pods I'll pop those on there I mean you could even magnetize this bit and this bit if you really wanted but I just don't think it's necessary and as I say I'm all for magnetizing stuff where it makes a difference and where it makes everything easier and more convenient but in this case um, I don't think it's necessary so all I'm going to do now is just glue these missiles onto the underwings this is my personal preference um, you really don't have to put these on at this stage um, because they're only available for use on one of the variants um, but I just think it completes the look rather than you having a, a wing there with an empty um, missile rack point on it Again, you could probably magnetise these if you wanted. Um, and if you have a bajillion magnets to spare and the time to figure it out, by all means, go ahead and do so. I applaud you um, for your dedication. However, um, I'm not going to lose any sleep by not doing it. So, with this being the Thunderstrike, we want the sensor ones in there. Let's put in our crew. Vertical that side, horizontal that side. Then we have the roll bars, and this is why I said do not glue these roll bars in if you're leaving the crew out because as you can see that space marine does not fit through that gap I mean it does raise a few questions over the realism of the kit when there's a roll bar that literally he would have to take off in order to be able to get out of his vehicle Let's not worry too much about that. This is the 41st millennium after all. Um, and we are talking about 8 foot tall super soldiers. Riding around in anti-gravity. Doing buggies. So there we go. I've not put the uh, repulsor plates on. But I mean, they are more likely to fall off at this stage. Because they are on the underside of the kit. That's it. That's done. A lot quicker than Gladiator. Um, it's a similar sort of size um, to the existing Space Marine Land Speeders. For anyone that's wondering. Um, but I think it's just a wonderful kit. I really do. Um, I'll be honest, when I saw that picture, I thought it looked quite chunky. Um, the pictures that I've seen that are from the, the GW promos, it looked 
quite boxy. I don't think it looks anything like that when you get them in the flesh. They're really nice and sleek. There's a there's a a real sort of feeling of speed and power um, about them. Um, and quite frankly, I only had intentions to get two. I might very well be increasing that to at least three, maybe four or five or six eventually. Um, just because I think you know half a dozen of those that on the table would look absolutely stunning. Um, uh, may not be very effective in the game, <laughs> spending that many points on that many land speeders, um, but uh, it would just look incredible on the tabletop. So there you go. That's the um, that's the storm speeder build and um, not magnetized. Um, because it doesn't need to be. Um, hope you enjoyed the video. Um, I'll, 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 yeah, I'll say it. Please like and subscribe. Um, it will help in terms of getting the the channel um, uh, sort of noticed and getting more members and uh, and sort of hopefully in uh, in the longer term it will help me uh, me get some um, some more content up. Um, if you do like this type of video, let me know, um, and I'll try and figure out what I want to do next. I probably want a couple more ATVs, um, so I could do one of those um, as a video like this. Um, I probably will steer away from doing this sort of video for infantry, um, uh, but I definitely need another Impulsor, at least one more. Um, so that will certainly uh, be an option. Um, and who knows? I might even uh, be persuaded to get another repulsor, um, just for the fun of it. Anyhow, enjoy, happy hobbying, and we'll see you next time.